Percy Jackson books. Don't worry, he always survives. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Hannah and today we're going to talk about the top 10 children's and middle grade books. Now this is slightly different from my other video where I did the top 10 classic children's books as these are a bit more modern, maybe in the last 10, 15 years ago, I think that's the furthest they go back, I'm not 100% sure, but let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with number 1, Pages and Co. Look at that. This one also has some illustrations in it as well. This is really fun. And the second one. And then the third one in this series, I think it's coming out around September. So this series is really lovely because it primarily resolves around Tilly, who becomes engaged in the book wandering world. So she wanders into storybooks and these are all classic tales. As you can see, Alice in Wonderland, Anna Green Gables. So these are classic faces that we get reimagined in this new way. So these characters come to life around her and she also has a very special friend Oscar and they, they go on their book wandering adventures together and this has a really nice setting because it's set in a bookshop Pages and Co is called is the bookshop's title it's a really nice novel <laughs> I'm actually really disappointed because I got this one signed and this one signed but the third one isn't going to be signed so now I'm just like what is life okay and then I don't know what I'm doing with my hands, but then, and number two, we are going to recommend the Magisterium series. Now, I've already recommended this in a previous video. Oh, these are out of order. So the Iron Trials first, and so these follow Cal with his magicating father, and he gets frisked into a magic world, and it's a bit Harry Pottery, a bit Percy Jacksony. <laughs> like a mix and a combination of all so children will love these I really fell in love with these and they're, and he's got this wolf as well I love an animal sidekick <laughs> and then number three is the book of beginning and this is the first one in the series the emerald atlas and it's the fire chronicle and then it's the black reckoning now I read these when I was younger and I remember crying <laughs> I think it was number two was it? I've only read the first two but I really enjoyed them so Oh, now I want to reread them. <laughs> this follows a selection of magical books. Each one focuses on one of the books. And there's three siblings and they each have a book, I think. And then they go with the magic of the book. Go with the flow. I don't know what this action is, but yes. Just so you appreciate how dramatic it is, the little blurb on the back starts with Three children, two worlds, one prophecy. So this has a similar sort of feeling to a series of unfortunate events with the three children and they've grown up in a string of miserable orphanages and all their memories of their parents have faded but soon they find a magical book and then the whole world changes and their life isn't as miserable as it was before unless you read for everyone in the series and then you cry your eyes out and then that's all you remember of it you grow up and you're still haunted by what happens and you're not sure if you can go on anymore <laughs> I think everyone has a few books in their lifetime that have scarred them and the books of the beginning have definitely left their mark on me. Or, I don't think I could do a recommendation video without the Harry Potter series. I know there's a lot of controversy going on lately about the author, but... You can't go through your life not reading Harry Potter. Um, you're probably wondering why I've just chosen a random book in the series. That's because I've got a book crate up there with my Harry Potter books in. And it's carefully, carefully balanced. And I, I can't disturb it. Even if I breathe in that direction, it'll all fall down. So I'll try and do a, a sneaky video of it later. Maybe sneak up on it. So, do I need to explain what Harry Potter is about? A boy in wizarding school. <laughs> I feel like everyone knows this, but I'm going to use the term Cassandra Clara, he always uses, and that's Harry Potter thinks he's a mundane, but he's not. And he's thrust into this magical world with Hermione and Ron, and everyone else should know what it's about from there. But yes, 
read this. Number five, also talking about books that will make you cry. Bridget Terabithia. This is so sad. I remember I watched the movie first so I knew what was coming and yet I was still not prepared. I remember reading it thinking, oh, maybe it actually doesn't happen in the book, that thing. And I was like, hmm, oh, this is very normal, this is a great book. Mm -hmm. Then this the tears stop coming. <laughs> it's a bit... <laughs> I get emotional thinking about this one. I don't know if you should do it to yourself to be honest. If you like to cry then it's very cathartic, otherwise you can't stop the tears, dude. Tears will not stop. So it follows Jess and Leslie Burke and their next door neighbours and they're playing and making their own little kingdom, this land of make-believe. They swing there by a rope and stuff happens, man. Yeah, okay. I'm moving on before I start crying in this video. And then number six, you're probably thinking, why am I showing this blank blue thing? And this is my Kindle. Yes. I haven't used my Kindle in years, actually, so new experiences. I'm getting lots of e arc so that's the main reason that I've really gone into this. I've even got this folder from when I was little called Princesses and Books I Must Read. I must have had a princess fascination back then, as uh, all people do. Now I've lost where I am, oh, I'm in the samples page, and I've called the samples, samples, dot dot dot, but not for long. <laughs> the Ship of Shadows. So this is about Aaliyah or Alija. I think it's Aaliyah, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's spelled A-L-E-J-A. -E I think it's Aaliyah. I think there was a moment where it says, and this is how you pronounce my name. I don't know, I usually go with the first moment of that's how I'm going to say your name for the rest of it, mate, being right or wrong. I even had this Cassandra Clare book where I didn't like one of the protagonist's names, so I called them Cassie throughout the whole thing. And people who were like, who are you on about, Hannah? And I'm like, Cat oh, yeah, that's not really her name, that's what I called her. I don't know, I change things, I, I'm a bit random. But in The Ship of Shadows, I think this, this one's just recently come out, but I read it a little while ago. And it's for anyone who has a little bit of a pirate obsession. I don't know where my pirate obsession has come from lately, but I, I think I've read like three pirate books on the trot, so... And this one follows Leah, and this is set on the Spanish harbour where she grows up and then she gets in a sticky situation where she ends up on the pirate ship and it's a whole crew of women pirates. I am me Hershey's. <laughs> And she goes on magical adventures and she embraces magic which the world isn't as embracing of. Embracing? <laughs> but it's a really lovely novel and it, the main message is that girls can do anything boys can do. I don't know what I'm doing all these gestures for today, I'm in a very gesturing mood. But if you want to actually buy the physical version, it has like... You know when it has like a hole in it so then you can see through the cover and it's got this is such a bad description but when you open it there's like a hole in it and then you see the design underneath and it's of the boat you might just want to look it up that much anyway so number and that is another one on my kindle which is moonchild voyage of the lost and found and this is also a piratey book. I told you I've got a pirate thing going on. So this book's inspired by Arabian Nights and I said it was a magical middle grade sea novel, at sea novel, with Amira or Amira, whichever pronunciation suits your boat. Is that is that a is that a saying? Suits your boat, rocks your boat, rows your boat, don't know. So she lives on this boat and she has two mothers and she also has a gin and this is basically a magical creature that stays by her side and hers is in cat form and she also meets a boy who has a goldfish can you imagine how horrible it would be to carry my goldfish around with me everywhere but no the cat form is way better and basically she has to go on her own pirate adventure and the world isn't as accepting <laughs> like the other book the world isn't as accepting as magic as she believed so she has to figure that all out and embrace this new world on land as she's been living in sea so she doesn't know 
most of the reality is going on because she's been very sheltered and protected by her mom. It was a very enjoyable read and a great one for young girls again, maybe for young boys as well. And you've got different islands as well with different mysteries. So it's a, it's a mix of everything, so it's quite nice. Number eight. Uh, I'm also reading another one on my Kindle, I wasn't going to mention it, but because I'm only halfway and I don't really do recommendations until I've done the whole book. But I'm quite enjoying this one so far and it's called, it's called The Edge of Everyone. And basically it follows children who've lost their parents again. All these books seem to have orphan children, maybe because they get up to more trouble without parents around. But they've gone to move in with their aunt. I've only literally just started reading it. I will say the only thing that's getting my go a bit is that they keep going because the narrator is very prominent in here and they keep going dear reader and it's just making my eye twitch a little bit but the story itself is actually really good because you've got the dad's perspective as well which is what you don't really usually get so you've got the children then you've got the dad and the little brother's got autism as well so you get to see this new perspective on how he sees the world and how his sister protects him and looks after him and keeps a fine schedule so as not to agitate it's a, it's a nice book on how they've done that as well so far I have finished it so I, I don't know books usually go downhill when I recommend them in the middle so I'll throw out a review on my Instagram soon when I finished it and, and I like that about a Kindle actually I do like my physical books more than a Kindle and I always will but on a Kindle it tells you uh, how many hours you have left on a book so I can sort of go oh I can read this whole book in a day because it's only like three hours of my day but if I was reading a book I'd be like mmm there's, there's some, there's some, there's quite a few pages left in here, so I'm like, oh. But now I'm just like, I'll probably have my whole afternoon finished. The Edge of Everywhere. I don't know why that, why the title is that yet either. So you can tell I haven't got very far. I don't know whatever it is or why it's on the edge of something. I gotta find out, and I gotta find out what's happening to the dad as well. I'm just like, come on. <laughs> and it's got also spiritual bits in there, like he keeps praying for help and I'll help you. It's okay. Yeah, I don't really know what's happening at the moment though. Okay, and number nine. Number nine. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Really a video if I don't recommend the Percy Jackson series. Now, I'm a little bit ashamed to admit that it took me quite a long while to hop on the Percy Jackson bandwagon. And that's only because when I was little, I only read books with female perspectives. I liked the first person narrative of a girl. <laughs> <laughs> but now I've expanded and I I did like Harry Potter but I don't think that's first person, it's third person isn't it? But anyway I read these recently and I'm currently on the Heroes of Olympus series. I took a little break from that though because the books are huge. I think I'm on number three now. I don't know, they're very enjoyable books but I've got so many books on my TBR that you just don't have time at the moment. So Percy Jackson, Like a Wrinkle in Time dropping Percy Jackson books. Don't worry, he always survives. <laughs> and so they go on adventures, him, Annabeth and Grover, and they do stuff and they always get into trouble and there's always a monster around every corner so just expect it. Turn the page, there's a monster. Turn your head and there's a monster. Turn the turn your phone on and there's a monster. That's actually true. So <laughs> and then number 10 <sighs> I don't know why I'm out of breath. <laughs> is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. This is the first Neil Gaiman book I read and that was at university. See, at uni you're still reading the children books if you're doing an English degree like me. And this was actually so enjoyable. Uh, oh, oh. This is actually a really nasty copy. I've got this really cheap online. Just because it had to go in my bag and my bag gets battered. And I've even dog-eared. Oh, I really hate dog-earing. What have I dog -eared? The leaves fall and the years pass one after the next like the tick tick ticking of a clock. I remember that I was doing this um, theory about time in the novel. I was also doing one about names and the importance of the, ch the changing of the Coraline to Caroline and how the cat also didn't have a name. I was getting really into it and I remember sitting down with my lecturer after and he's like you really enjoyed this didn't you and I was like yes I did. So if you don't know, this is the creepy film with the button eyes, that's the, <laughs> the best way I can explain it, but it's Coraline and she goes into this other world, sort of like a parallel of hers but creepier and they all have button eyes. The food's a lot better on the other side, I don't know why I'm mentioning that but I remember that being a distinctive feature of like, hmm, 
reads a lot better on the other end of things. Neil Gaiman's very good at very quirky characters, the quirky scenes and moments, so that's always enjoyable to read. I've also heard people compare this to a darker version of Alice in Wonderland, so if that intrigues you, then I definitely recommend Coraline or Caroline or whatever you want to call her. The name, the book, the thing, the paper in book form. So guys, that is my top 10 recommendations for children's and middle grade books and I hope you enjoyed them. If you did, please subscribe down below for more videos of this kind <laughs> and thank you so much for watching. Breathe, be happy and stay safe and thank you again.